Uh, good morning, GM, everybody. Uh, I'm Humpty Calderon. And uh, yeah, as uh, Lamari was mentioning, I'm going to be introducing Ontology. Um, I have a presentation, Lamari. Is it possible to share my uh, like share screen or share something here? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. Let me share. Here it is, share keynote. Okay, well, do let me know if you don't see this. Um, I'll make adjustments as necessary. Um, okay, great. Can you see this first screen? Fine. The ont ID. Yes, ontology ont ID. All right. Cool. Um, all right, cool. So I'm going to be starting with like an overview of ont ID, and then we can use this to kind of jump off into ont login specifically, and then talk about the challenges. So what is ont ID? Ont ID is basically Ontology's uh, DID implementation that uh, helps you build powerful cross-chain identity-driven experiences. And we're going to get into what that means exactly in a moment. Um, from a high level, ID is a decentralized identity solution, something that should be familiar to anybody here that is participating in the DIF hackathon, as um, you should be familiar with DIDs. Its purpose is to provide secure, private, scalable digital identity systems across multiple blockchains. That's actually, in my opinion, one of the value propositions of ID specifically, uh, and more about that in a little bit as well, um, allowing you to provide these blockchain agnostic self-sovereign identity to your users. Um, you can see here, and you can dive into this as much as you want, but starting in 2017, when Ontology joined the Decentralized Identity Foundation, through this year where Ontology announced a $10 million fund to support developments in the DID space. So uh, again, if beyond the hackathon, if you're a DID developer, I highly encourage you to come on and uh, check us out and ask questions and build with Ontology. Um, okay, there we go. Um, so ID is one of the more widely distributed uh, DITs on chain uh, with 1.5 million users. Um, it also has a variety of applications, including a proof of concept with Daimler Mobility, where they created these passenger identities for uh, car fleets or automobiles. Um, it's, and this is what I meant about distribution, uh, Ont ID is currently integrated with seven blockchains with a goal of 100 by the end of next year. Uh, I'm pushing Dr. Mao and the ontology team to make this a reality. I think that this is a wonderful opportunity to uh, introduce DID to a blockchain community. So that's uh, ontology's goal with DID. Um, the core functionality, again, should not be anything unfamiliar to this group here, but with DID or ontid, you have these uh, self-sovereign identities that are compatible across multiple blockchains where users can manage that digital identity uh, in a self-sovereign or independent manner and uh, incorporating private proofs or verifiable credentials as we uh, are more familiar with in attestations. And this is really the kind of umbrella or the terminology that we use to encompass quite a few different products. So the ID suite of components includes that ont ID, right, the DID, uh, but also ont login, specifically what we're going to talk about today, which allows for this simplified access across platforms or a decentralized authentication system. Uh, ont tag, which is the trust anchor ga gateway, which ensures the authentication or authenticity, excuse me, of these user credentials. And O score, which adds a layer of trust through reputation scoring. And in a moment, I'll show another slide that shows specifically how that's also been evolved at Ontology uh, across different blockchains. And I won't get too deep in the technical details because this is where Dr. Mao or Kendall shines. Uh, but you can see here how from an application level, you can through Ontology's Trust, Ac Trust Anchor Gateway, excuse me, um, you can apply for these credentials, uh, call for them and issue them. So basically verify these identities um, with ID, Ont Login and uh, the suite of products. Uh, this is, in particular, uh, one of my favorite slides just because I had a lot to do with its development in its early days. Um, Orange Protocol integrates ID pretty extensively from the login 
procedure where you can uh, easily create an identity uh, using DID. Uh, you can attest or record these uh, attestations onto your digital identity, right, as VCs. Uh, and an interesting wrinkle that we added to this was that we we added a way to mint uh, these attestations by abstracting away the private data uh, using on-chain proofs, which uh, provided developers another level of uh, composability uh, and usability and maybe even better said familiarity. Onto Wallet is another example of where this has been integrated. Um, in my opinion, one of the best identity wallets out there. Uh, don't at me <laughs> or at me and let me know if you do see something else that you think is better or introduces some other features that because I'm always looking to improve this product. It's uh, a really wonderful project in the Ontology ecosystem that allows you to easily create an identity uh, and attest to these identities as well and build with these identities. So. That's the end of the presentation. I did also just briefly take a couple of notes here and wanted to talk about Aunt Login. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Make sure I don't know how to do that. Oh, here it is. Share. Nope, that's not the right window. Stop sharing. There it is. Okay. Forgive me, I don't use Zoom very often. Um, so I'm just gonna, and I wrote some notes, so it looks like I'm reading I am, so apologies for that. But um, briefly, what is Aunt Login? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, Aunt Login is a decentralized authentication system designed to replace traditional login methods, offering trustless authentication, self-sovereign identity, password login, and multi-chain support. That last one specifically, again, is, uh, my opinion, the value proposition of Ant ID and using the suite of products under Ant ID uh, is that comp compatibility uh, with multiple blockchains and the commitment to continue to uh, support or add more blockchains in the future. Uh, so if you're building on any, and I would say in this point, EVM compatible blockchain, Ant ID should be there. Uh, so as that ecosystem continues to grow, so will your support for decentralized identity systems. Um, so why building with Aunt Login? Briefly, the traditional username password system is not only cumbersome, but insecure. Aunt Login enhances user engagement by making the process smoother and protecting user data. Again, DIDs, VCs, this is something we should all be very familiar with, especially if we're participating in the DIF hackathon. Um, users can store credentials such as email verification in a decentralized wallet and share them securely across multiple services. Uh, password authentication, improving security and cryptographic signatures. Uh, and challenge respond mechanisms so that rather than relying on these server stored passwords, you can uh, rely better on these decentralized systems. Uh, simplifying data management for businesses and reducing the risk of sensitive data breaches, which I think anybody who's ever had a password uh, will uh, remember or recall seeing an email saying that the likelihood is that there was a data breach and your information has been uh, uh, revealed or, um, yeah, that you need to go and change some information. So with these systems, you're able to create a much more secure environment. So with that, I want to hand it off to Dr. Mao or Kendall uh, to go ahead and introduce more of the technical details of Aunt ID and Aunt Login specifically. Uh, before I do, though, I did want to also say that in addition to the Aunt Login implementation challenge for Ontology, one of my favorite, and this is something that I advocate for uh, as much as I can, we also have a second challenge that is less so technical and more so creative. If you consider yourself to be a uh, creative person and have some ability to read technical documents, uh, we're highly encouraging you to also submit uh, your own kind of tutorials or interpretations of our documentation that extends the value of the way that we've written those out. So anybody else like yourself who's engaging with that content, if they feel uh, so inclined, they're able to understand that better and get started uh, in a much more seamless manner. So that is definitely one of my favorite challenges. Uh, definitely one of the ones that I would do if I was eligible. So highly encourage you to check that out if you don't consider yourself to be as technically savvy to be able to do uh, the on login implementation. All right, I'll shut up now, Dr. Mao. I'll let it go to you. Hi, everyone. This is Kendall from our team. 
um, my internet connection is not very stable, so I turn off my video. Let me find share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep, we see it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm very happy to have this opportunity to talk to you about the ontology network and the decentralized identity related development. Uh, today my talk is mainly about uh, on logging, a decentralized universal authentication logging company, which is provided uh, in the form of SDKs. Uh, but first of all, I will tell you about some technical facts about the ontology network. Mainly the VMs supported by the ontology network, which is used for, I think, for uh, developing the apps on the ontology network. And then I will go deep into ontologging. Uh, ontology supports three different types of VMs, including new VM, Watson VM, and EVM. Uh, developers can choose different languages according to their own wishes to develop smart contracts and DApps on the ontology mainland. In addition, we use native smart contracts to implement system level functions such as governance and uh, ontid. Uh, here, I want to point out that, uh, as you can see from this picture, uh, different types of smart contracts can interact with each other. New VM contracts and with uh, what some VM contracts can interact with each other and they can um, both call EVM contracts and uh, native smart contracts. This greatly increases the flex flexibility uh, of smart contract development. Okay, we briefly introduced the uh, VM's uh, ontology network supports. So um, now let's move to the ontologging. Uh, so the introduction given by my colleague, you have to just know, I believe everyone has a certain understanding of the uh, Untidy framework. Now let's first take a look at uh, the SDKs provided by Untidy. Uh, these SDKs can be roughly divided into two types. One is the fundamental SDKs, which include ID SDK and VC SDK. They implemented uh, the basic functions of Untidy identity and uh, uh, identification. IDSDK is used to create, uh, modify, and uh, deactivate on on ID. Uh, it will support more blockchain networks in the future. Another fundamental SDK is VCSDK. It is used to generate uh, verifiable credentials, generate verifiable presentations from uh, verifiable credentials, and verify VCs and VPs. Uh, it's it was it was noting that it is a um, DID agnostic. Agnostic. So yes, besides the anti-ID methods, we will let this SDK support um, more DID methods and uh, even yes and uh, wallet addresses. And on top of the uh, fundamental SDKs are some application SDKs. This mainly includes three SDKs. The first one is Mercury. Uh, a trusted, decentralized, and a DID based peer to peer communication framework. It defines uh, um, DID based protocols for building connections, transmitting basic uh, messages, uh, transmitting uh, verifiable credentials, and uh, presenting proofs between entities. The second application SDK is on the tag, an open and decentralized identity verification platform. It provides Private uh, KYC service for users. So, Ontology Trust Ecosystem has gathered uh, trust anchors such that uh, provide global uh, identity authentication service, um, including Identity Mine, CFC, and Shaft Pro, and uh, as well as emails, uh, email, mobile, and uh, social media account authentication methods. Uh, the last SDK, which is uh, also, the one that we hope you will pay attention to in this hackathon is onto logging. 
Mm, it is a decentralized universal authentication logging component uh, um, that helps developers share the details of the authentication uh, implementation and uh, can quickly bring a very secure logging experience to um, enterprises and services. And uh, the entire logging process can be divided into the following steps. The first step is the uh, authentication request. Uh, they will start the logging process and uh, let the client send the uh, authentication request to the server. Then the second step is the uh, authenticator challenge. Receive the request, the server generates and sends a challenge to the client, which can specify the um, required uh, information encapsulated in VCs if needed. Uh, third step is the signature and the authorization. The client receives the challenge and then requests the signature and the verifiable presentation from the identity ma management wallet with the challenge. Uh, the last step is verification. The server verifies if the uh, response from the client is uh, correct or not. If yes, the server passes uh, the verifiable presentation to a button and the user information authorized by the users. Uh, this is uh, an application example for, from the Orange Protocol. The picture shows is a message of the third step, which is uh, the message um, that uh, user can perceive. It includes the user's identity, service identity, and uh, the announced for replay res resistant and uh, other informations. It is worth noting that um, in this example, this step only does, uh, only do, uh, only does the uh, authentication. If the wallet supports, it can do authorization together. Okay, I would like to introduce some features of the ont logging. The first is the first feature is uh, trustless, which is mainly brought by authenticating user data securely with decentralized identities. The second one is the passwordless. Uh, users do not need to set up and uh, memorize the complex password for each service. The third one, the third one is uh, self sovereign. Users store identity information locally and uh, uh, authorize the service to access when needed. The fourth, the fourth is for developers. Developers can um, easily in integrate the SDK in minutes. Um, in, in addition to the above features, we can also see some other other ones. I want to emphasize the set um, when using onto login to authenticate the users, users can authorize some information to the server at the same time. That is, um, authentication and the user information author authorization uh, finished in one interaction. This is uh, very different from the traditional ch uh, challenge response login mechanism. I also would like to take a look at the uh, application scenarios of ont logging with you. Um, I think a service uh, targeting privacy sensitive users and uh, Web3 users systems that uh, are of uh, password management and so on can all try to use ont logging. Of course, there are many other application scenarios that uh, deserve attention. Um, finally, for this uh, hackathon, we hope that the community can help us improve and uh, apply our DID frameworks. Uh, some useful direction include uh, improvement to the ont logging protocol, such as combining with the um, account abstraction and uh, combining with the passkey. Uh, besides this, providing more convenient DID related SDKs is welcome. The third direction, I think, uh, is the uh, applications including application based on ont logging and other DID components. Uh, of course, this is just the direction we suggest that we will be very grateful if you, uh, you can provide better ideas. Uh, all the information can be found at the following two uh, UIS.
Okay, that's all. Uh, thank you. Great. Um, I guess this is a good opportunity for questions. If anybody had any questions or, yeah, about what was presented or the challenge specifically, um, go ahead and ask. I don't have a question, but more of a comment on on login that uh, for so for this hackathon, it is possible to submit to more than one challenge. So that's that's allowed as long as you meet the sponsor requirements. So it is possible you can integrate ONT login and submit it for ontology and another challenge if you figure out how to do so. So I just want to want to mention that as well for anyone who's listening in. Uh, yeah, I I think so. Uh... What a uh, submission, uh, welcome. All right, easy crowd today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, first session of the day. So uh, people might still be um, <laughs> finishing their coffee. Um, <laughs> depending where they are. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Everybody raise your coffee cups. <laughs> I like how they just keep getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> I literally have, I don't know, this looks like something I would camp with. Um, cool. Yeah. I mean, I guess for me, if I were to want to add anything here is, you know, we have a channel in the decentralized identity foundations, discord server. If you have any questions, if you're if you have curiosity about you know Aunt ID, Aunt Login, if you have any, if you've already used it and you have any issues uh, with having used it, I would highly recommend uh, joining that channel. Um, I think that's in the sponsor details, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right, Lamari, where people can just easily click on that link and go in that channel to just start chatting with us. One of the challenge uh, sites, sorry, I didn't mean the uh, sponsor site, but the channel site. Oh, to make sure that they can get to the to the Discord for ontology. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, let me see if there's, I don't think it's linked there, but um, let me see if we can get that linked. But for now, um, we could drop it in the chat here. Yeah, and I think you have in the chat here. So if you are in the chat, um, I believe Lamari's post has the DIF Hackathon Discord server. And once you go through their own kind of security uh, system there, you should be able to easily find the ontology channel under tracks and se sessions. Um, let us know. Obviously, we want to keep improving this through every challenge. Um, so personally, I think opt login would be a really cool implementation just because you have this um, opportunity to bridge, you know, the off-chain and on-chain world with DID uh, because of the extensive um, you know, kind of integration of Aunt ID itself. Um, and then if you're just creative, if you're not technical, I personally, whenever I attend hackathons or participate in them, I'm always looking for things that I can do that aren't necessarily requiring me to sit down and code. Um, it's fun to code, but sometimes you just want to be able to take on something different. So would recommend that too. So it doesn't, doesn't seem like there's any more questions um, from the room, but um, you definitely can continue the discussion or if you're watching the recording and have questions um, in the ontology chat. So looks like quite, there's a hand raised. All right, go ahead, William. Thank you very much. Um, so I just went over to the uh, D 
DeFi uh, Discord and join the Discord over there. Um, this uh, ID of uh, idea of verification of my ID. How do I do that? Or is that part? Do I find that in the Discord? Um, are you asking about this specific channel where to find the aunt login discussion? Well, I, I'm part of the ontology discord and now I just signed up for the DeFi uh, discord. If hackathon. Yeah. Discord. Yeah. And, and I'd like to uh, verify myself through this process. I just don't know how it's done. Is it the roles that you're asking about that it's asking um, what role you are during the hackathon? Well, I'm going to say that I'd be an observer, but that isn't up there. But no, I'm talking more about verifying who I am so that people know when they're interacting with me that they're actually interacting with me. Yeah, that would be amazing if we have that, but we don't for the hackathon server. So it's everyone's, you know, welcome to come in as long as they have the uh, the link to come into the server. Okay, thank you very it, much. It would be I nice to have that. Discord implement that. <laughs> to your point, um, but they're very trad web to, um, you know, kind of solutions. So uh, I don't. I know at one point they were starting to introduce some on-chain identities and they quickly backed off of that. So I know they have a, a group of users that um, are very uh, not necessarily interested in change to the way things work there. So I don't know how much they would push that. But hey, we're always building new platforms, right? To satisfy those requirements and those needs. So I'm excited yeah, to see and, people and, building. And, and, anonymity has its place in its time, but uh being able to know who exactly you're dealing with and that they are in fact real is sort of kind of important right so yeah. thank you very much guys yeah my pleasure um if you're interested if you if, if your curiosity begs i would say check out orange protocol uh i believe it's orangeprotocol.io the website that is uh the credentialing platform that ontology built with ontid and oscore to apply a layer of trust, if you will, in a world that is, for the most part, pseudonymous, so that without having to reveal like private data, like giving you my passport or uh, you know uh, state ID, I can attest through my actions and others signaling me as a good actor, um, and then that kind of aggregates and creates this more composable identity that could be trusted but that remains private. I think to me, that's um, one of the cooler things that ontology has built, because again, it seeks to go beyond just simply being identity for, you know, for the sake of being identity. Um, it actually starts to implement some of these ideas of like, how can we introduce trust in a, in a world that for the most part is trustless uh, and also not private, so. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty cool app. Check it out. And uh, my DMs are always open and I am in the DIF server. Uh, I'm at Humpty or I am think I'm at the data dude there. Uh, but Humpty is my name there and I'm using that little brainish cartoon character. You're you're muted, uh, William. I'm, my apologies. Thank you very much. Uh, I do see that Jeff put a link in the chat, so I'm going to follow that link. Cool. Thank you. And thanks for asking really good questions. Did you want to keep it running, Lamari, or uh, what's oh. usually the... Here. Um, yeah, well, we could go ahead and wrap it up. Um, we don't have to go the whole hour. Um, that's fine. Um, and then we can just make the recording available um, to everyone um, very soon. So, so yeah. Uh, sorry, sorry about this, guys. My apologies for interrupting, not raising my hand. 
Um, so I followed that over there and it wants me to connect the wallet. Now, I, I've been part of a number of discords and uh, Web3 communities. And the, la the one that I've been a part of longest has been asking me to sign up with them with this, their eternal wallet. But I'm trying to avoid going to the point where I'm going to have six or seven different of these things. And I'm wondering, is there not a universal wallet that that can be moved and people will uh, recognize regardless of where you are? Namari, is there a wallet sign-in needed for Discord for your server? I, I don't remember seeing that. Oh, there's no wallet um, sign-in. Um, no, I think this is for Orange Protocol, guys. Rather than, oh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm totally getting my wires crossed here. Um, so I guess I'm trying to figure out how to answer this question. So in terms of like universal wallets, one of my favorite things to kind of think about is like how email has become a standard, right? Um, where your universal wallet per se is the email you choose to use to sign up to everything. Right. When things ask you to create an, an account, you normally create an account using an email. And I, I have several emails. I have my business emails. I have my junk email, which I sign up to a bunch of crap uh, with that I rarely check, if, if at all. Um, I At this point, I would also say that my wallets act very similarly, where I have... Um, multiple wallets, probably more wallets than I do emails, uh, I'm embarrassed to admit, uh, some of which have, you know, funds, uh, some of which I use just to jump into, you know, kind of junk uh, applications where I was like, eh, I don't know, if this is going to be a scam or a rug pull or dangerous, I'm going to log in using this wallet that if it gets compromised, it doesn't really matter. Um, the same, I think, can be said for DIDs. You know, it, it is a standard, right? The W3C standard, the DID standard. It's, so it is like email, it is a standard. Um, but like email, there could be different providers. So instead of like choosing Gmail or Hotmail or Yahoo, uh, maybe I'm aging myself by <laughs> using those as examples, but you could also use different uh, DIP providers um, and you can use them differently. Uh, the the question I think you're asking more specifically is less so about the standards, uh, you know, like private key wallets or did uh, identities, but it's more about the application itself. Um, there are different applications, but they all use wallet technology in the same way in the back end. So just because I use Onto Wallet for the most part to create a Web3 wallet doesn't mean that it does so any differently than the way that I would with MetaMask or Coinbase Wallet or all these things. If a particular website is asking for one wallet specifically that is not uh, something that you're used to using, um, this, I think, creates a bit of a friction point. Um, at Orange Protocol, I know we have, I think we have three, MetaMask being one of the older wallets uh, that you could use, Onto, and I forget what the third one is, I have asked the team to introduce a modal which allows you to select multiple types of wallets from that that would include things like Coinbase wallet, maybe even eternal wallets there. One of my favorite modals though, to be honest, is called Wallet Connect, which through Wallet Connect, it allows you, it basically prompts your wallet plugins on your browser so you can sign in with any wallet that you own. And Wallet Connect basically bridges that um, behavior to the website or web app that you're using. So I guess that's almost like an answer and a non-answer. It's like, yes, there are standards. Yes, there's ways of like having multiple accounts for different purposes. But at the same time, there are ways of like, um, not bridging, that's probably the wrong word, but like um, relieving some of that friction of having different types of applications managing your wallets too um, so that you can log into these web apps. And personally, I know that I've uh, raised this issue. So maybe this is you raising it to Dr. Mao and that I'd love that, that we do need to increase the flexibility of login options 
uh, on the Orange Protocol website so that people like you who may be using a different application uh, aren't forced to have to download another wallet, create another identity, et cetera, et cetera. But I would highly recommend checking out Onto Wallet, creating a throwaway account just to play around with it so that you can kind of take advantage of both worlds of seeing how Onto Wallet works, but also the way that Orange Protocol works, which is pretty rad. There's an ongoing campaign there right now on base. Whoa, Jeff, you shaved. You freaked me I out. did, yeah, yeah, just to scare people. I've got a load of weddings coming up, so I've had to make myself a little bit uh, shaved. It, it also took about 20 years off my age. Um, on the wallet side, William, I, I think what I'm going to try and do as well, I think this is a huge topic. Obviously, it's not quite where we're at here, but I, I'll chat with Humpty and see if we can uh, move it into our Thursday discussion uh, over on Spaces, because I think there's a huge discussion to be had on wallets and how DID can get over some of those complications that you're talking about in terms of having lots of addresses, lots of wallets, lots of chains trying to deal with. Um, I think it's a really good discussion. I get quite interested in that. So let's push that across. And uh, I know you're usually there on a Thursday. So let's push it onto a Thursday and do it that way. Yeah, thanks okay. for the call out there too. We do thank have the Thursday you. call. Thank you both gentlemen. Yeah, very, very much. Um, I like the idea of the streamlining process. It just, okay, I'm 63 now. So the idea of going in and creating things in the internet space, is still something rather new to me. So the idea that doing multiple wallet things is sort of like, it's even a little bit more. So, but yeah, no, we'll move to the Thursday discussion. Thank you very much for hopping in there for a second, Jeff. And thank you very much for your replies, Humphrey. Greatly yeah. appreciated. My pleasure. And and just to kind of like uh, maybe tease uh, a little bit more about the Thursday discussion. So if you're interested in learning more uh, about ontology, ID, and all these different uh, conversations that we've been having today. We'll extend on them on our space on Thursday on X. It happens at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, we'll continue for the rest of the month talking about this hackathon. Um, if you use DIDs, you can bind multiple identities, another plus of DIDs. So you could have like multiple wallets associated to one identity, and it's much more easy to recover uh, than you would traditional wallets. So uh, really cool stuff with DIDs. Uh, I think that's all we have, Lamari, and we can cut it if you'd like. Okay. Yeah, great discussion. Also, um, I'll just mention it that there also, there's a project of the Linux Foundation called the Open Wallet Foundation. And this is also one of the challenges that they're tackling is, you know, infinite wallets and then the threat of vendor lock-in because, you know, the big tech companies maybe kind of take over. So they are calling for an open source wallet, the development of an open source wallet. Um, so I don't know how deep you want to get into that, but um, but that is a place that you can look in. I can drop the link too, because then they have a link to the report that they put together. Um, so I'll drop that in there. Um, yeah, so I don't have anything um, anything else at the moment. So it, it was a great discussion there. Um, overall and a great presentation. And um, we'll have the link to this available very soon in Discord. And um, also I'll, I'll be getting out communications um, to everyone who registers for the hackathon on like where to find everything as well. So thanks once once again, everyone. Um, thank you, Hamdi, Jeff, uh, Kendall, uh, for your presentation and for uh, taking the time to share this with our hackathon participants. So with that, we'll see you all around Discord. Okay, bye everyone. Bye.